We've seen the White House announcement regarding the decision to afford full protection of the Geneva Convention to the Taliban fighters, but not to extend those measures to al-Qaeda operatives. We will fully comply with that guidance in subsequent briefings tomorrow. From a practical standpoint, neither al-Qaeda or Taliban will see huge changes in their daily routine. Since though the detainees were not entitled to POW privileges, they had been provided many POW pr privileges as a matter of policy. For example, they receive three meals a day that correspond to their dietary laws. They have the opportunity to worship, the opportunity to send and receive mail subject to security screening, privileges that they will not receive because they have not been granted POW status include access to a store, referred to as canteen in the Geneva Conventions, to purchase food, soap, and tobacco, a monthly advance of pay, the ability to have personal financial accounts, and the ability to receive musical instruments and sports outfits. Are you able to tell us a little bit more now about how you're going to comply with that part yeah, of the I plan? Keep in mind that though the President has made that distinction, many of the detainees are not forthcoming. Many have been interviewed as many as four times, each, providing, each time providing a different name and different information. Now, in terms of the ratio of the Taliban to the al-Qaeda, what I could say about that is, is that we have a group who claim the status of Taliban, possibly to secure favorable treatment, possibly because they truly are Taliban. We have a smaller number who we have con Confirmed generally through other sources and not through their own affirmation that they are Al-Qaeda. We have a group in the middle who we have not determined what their status is. All that we can say with certainty is that none of these people are on our side.